Uh, Daryl Johnson, Fox Sports, uh, three Super Bowls over a decade playing in the NFL. He is joining us from his house in Dallas. So, um, you know, I thought it was that that NFL releases the top 100 list, and some of it's nonsense. Uh, some of it I just roll my eyes at. Uh, Mahomes was the third quarterback. Uh, Lamar was first, and uh, Russell was second, and everybody's all crazy. And then I think it shows the depth of quality quarterback play. It is interesting, though, I've been on this for about four years, that Russell Wilson plays the position differently, and we don't know quite how to put our arms around him. And he finished as the number two player in the league and ahead of Mahomes. When was the first time, because you've done Seahawks games, Moose, that you did a Seahawks game with Russell Wilson, and you finally were like, oh, my Lord, this, this, has got to, this is Steve Young. This is, when was the first time you truly appreciated him? Well, really the first time we did a game because we had the meeting with him and I was so impressed with him as a young man that I was really excited to see how he was going to play on the field. And, and he followed it up. And you know, you always hear about the intangibles at the quarterback position. And, and it was amazing when we sat down with him. They were, they were everywhere. And you just wondered how the guys were going to gravitate to that. Um, and just watching his growth, his development, you know, how he's become – uh, you know, the centerpiece of that franchise and the success that they've had year in and year out, the consistency. And it all starts with Russell. So for me, the, the, the biggest thing was, you know, kind of forming your own opinion of, of what you thought he was going to be after meeting with him and then going out and doing that game and seeing everything you hoped would happen from the quarterback position happen. Uh, and he's got the will uh, to, to help his team in critical possessions. Uh, he wants the ball in his hand at the end of the game uh, when it's on the line. Uh, there's just all the things that you can't teach a quarterback, he has all of those. And it was it was great to see a transfer from the meeting room out onto the field. You know, it, it's interesting. Lamar Jackson was number one, and I wouldn't make him the number one quarterback, but athletically, Mahomes ran a four eight forty. Lamar's like a four three five. Athletically, he's a you know, he's just crazy. You, there's just nothing else like him in the league. I what I like about Lamar is instead of running from his critics or being defensive, he has acknowledged in the last two years, I need to get bigger. I need to be a better pocket quarterback. He's really owned it. He's really come out and say, I heard my critics. I think they're right. What do you think is the next? Is this what he is now? Or do you think there's a next level for, and you played with Troy when he was real young. Is there a next level for Lamar? I, I think the step that he took uh, last year was was amazing. And I think the fact that he has Greg Roman with him as his offensive coordinator, he can play to his strengths. I, I think he'll continue to grow. Uh, probably the next two seasons, and then you really start to see him refine his craft. Um, you know, especially when you have somebody who knows that they have to work on the things that maybe aren't as uh, as at the level that some of the other guys, the Russell Wilsons, the Patrick Mahomes. Uh, when you have somebody who understands that and embraces that the way Lamar does, uh, you know, the sky is the limit for him. And, and I like the point that you brought up, and it goes back. You know, early in my broadcasting career, when, when we had Michael Vick playing in the league and, and people were trying to spy him and you're like, he's the most athletic guy in the field. There's nobody that can cover him. So why would you put a spy on him? And, and that will be the problem that, that Lamar presents to defenses moving forward as Greg Roman continues to find different ways to use it. So uh, I, I'm excited to see, you know, what's going to happen to him over the next two years in his career. And, and I love the fact that, you know, maybe a little bit of disappointment on draft day when he came out and kind of that same that same mentality that we're seeing right now. Uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and whine about it. I'm not going to complain about it. I'm going to go in. I'm going to work. I'm going to wait for my opportunity. And then when I get my opportunity, uh, I'm not coming off the field. I'm going to make it really, really hard for you to go back to the uh, to the starting quarterback. You know, it's I've said this before. Um, I get why players don't like the franchise tag. I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, and, and I'm not always for the players. There are times I think owners have rights. They create the capital. Uh, the XFL folds because, you know, the owners aren't making money. You can have, you do need capital. So I'm not always pro player. I don't love the franchise tag. I could make an argument, and I like Dak. I don't love him. I like him. I like his leadership. I like his maturity and toughness. But I could understand this morning if he's like, I made my owner four hundred million dollars. This team was a mess. We could, the networks didn't even want to put us on for about a year, and I won the division twice. Would you understand if, if there was a little resentment by Dak, thinking, "Guys, I made people a lot of money here in Dallas. This is the biggest brand in the world for sports. What if he's a little bitter? You'd be okay with it." 
Absolutely. I was a little bitter in my career <laughs> at times. So, you know, I, I can't sit here and judge other people. Um, when you're competitive, just everything you just talked about with LeBron James, and, and you went not only into sports, but into business as well. When you're wired that way, you also want to be validated in the belief that you have in yourself. So yeah, there were two negotiations for me when, when I was a little bit bitter. Um, you know, I, I felt that I was underappreciated. Um, you know, my, my first opportunity for a good contract uh, the, the organization told me, hey, you, you've done a really nice job the last two seasons, but we want to see it one more time. So before the franchise tag was even in place, I got kind of the franchise tag, you know, not to the numbers they are today, but I got a one year deal, um, not a substantial increase in pay, but it was kind of a let's see it one more time. If you prove it, we'll get you the big next uh, next year. We'll get you the big contract. Uh, you, you better believe you're a little bit frustrated and a little bit bitter. Uh, now, what do you do with that? You know, for me. OK, you just put everything into my court. Now I'm going to go out and show you that you probably should have signed me to the to the contract this year. And, and when you chose not to, I'm going to I'm going to control the outcome next year during the course of negotiation. So it's really just how you handle it. How do you react to it uh, and how you respond to it? And, and I think the DAC, everything you said, I absolutely agree. You know, you really like him. We just talked about Russell and the intangibles that Russell has. You know, DAC has a lot of those same qualities, and those same character values. Uh, you know, I, I see him embracing this and, and making the Cowboys, you know, pay for the fact that, uh, that that they franchise tag them this year. You know, it's interesting. Um, leadership. I asked Jimmy Johnson one time about leadership and he goes, I, I don't know what it is. He goes, Troy had it, whatever it is. He goes, I, I can't explain it. And when I watch like Patrick Mahomes, I thought Carson Wentz at the end of last year, that was leadership. Everybody's hurt. He just put the team on his shoulders. When you, it, 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 and leadership isn't talent. There are, you know, Matt Hasselbeck, I thought, had some real leadership skills. I, I don't think he had the biggest arm or, or the greatest skill set. When you go back and you look at Mahomes, one of the things I like about Patrick is his ability to improvise, um, ad lib, um, open to coaching, which, by the way, not everybody is. When you go back to Troy Aikman, if you can define it, what made we all know Troy had an arm. What made Troy great? Because Patrick has a chance to be Troy, reel off multiple Super Bowl here. In in hindsight, what was it with Troy that you first noticed that was just different than other guys you'd play with or seen? There's a unique quality that uh, not only players have, but I think a lot of the great coaches have. I think it's one of the common threads, and they have the ability to make you want to be the best you possibly can be so they will respect you as a player. And, and that's what, that's what Troy has. Um, you know, that's what Troy did for all of us. Yeah. I, I wanted, I wanted to earn his respect. I, when he talked about me to other people, I wanted him to talk, uh, uh you know, with, uh, you know, a lot of complimentary, uh, you know, things, you know, it, it, he, he works hard, you know, just all the things that I valued. I wanted him to see that in me. I wanted him to respect me as a player. And, and I had a coach in college who was the same way. It, it's very, it's very rare when you get that. And uh, it's probably one of the components uh, that LeBron had and all the other people that you mentioned in that, that previous segment. Um, you you want to earn their respect. You want them to, to value you as a teammate. And, and that was one of the great things that Troy had. And then when you get a, a group of guys who all want to do that together, that, that, that's when you see a team really become uh, something special. And, and the one thing that I think, I, I don't know Patrick Mahomes well. I haven't been around him. I don't know if he has that quality. The thing that I love about Patrick Mahomes is, is his passion for the game. And, and that is infectious as well. Um, so there's a number of different ways to be that leader. And it was one of the things that, that our great teams had. We had a number of different guys who led in different ways. You know, Eric Williams, you know, was our physical presence. You know, Michael Irvin was the, the heart and soul of the team, the emotional leader. Troy was where the buck stops. You know, he was the, you know, the, the alpha leader in that group of, of, of probably six or seven guys with great leadership qualities. Uh, that's when it gets fun. And, and, I, and I think with a guy like Patrick Mahomes, the passion he plays the game with, um, you know, just having all those guys around, he always seems like he's having fun. Uh, it, it's going to be a lot of fun to see his career progress as well. By the way, as a dad, you would understand if a player said, I'm opting out, you know, a, a newborn. As a teammate, though, when you were, you know, you're on those Dallas teams and you know this is legacy stuff here. You guys are great. Would there be a – I mean, I could see myself saying if a teammate opted out – man, you're, you're killing us here. But then part of me would be like, 
okay, he's a dad, there's kids. Yeah. How do you how do you reconcile all that? Because when you play football so hard, practice with football's hard. Football practice is hard. How do you reconcile it if a teammate just says, I'm out for the year? It's his decision. Uh, these are such unusual times. Um, I think one of the things that, that our country is struggling with right now is just to let all of us have the information, have the data, understand the science, and then let us make our own decisions. How do we want to live our life during these unprecedented times? And, and I think that that's what the NFL has done kind of in a microcosm. And I, I would have no, you know, no issues whatsoever if, if Nate Solder was my teammate and he was a cancer survivor and he had a son who was a cancer survivor and he has a newborn baby boy at the house. For him to walk away from the NFL season this year, absolutely, completely understand that. And, and for whatever the reasons are for each of these individuals as they decide to opt out for the NFL season, they shouldn't be judged. Yeah. It's their decision. They've got all the science. They've got all the information in front of them and let them make that decision. Um, you know, you, you would hope that you would get together as a team and everybody would discuss it before you went in. And then as these decisions are made, everybody understands and everybody can talk about it. Uh, but, but I like the way the NFL is doing it. They've, they've given them the protocols, um, which are outstanding. I, I think they've got a really good shot at, at doing this. They're, I think they're learning a lot from baseball right now is baseball is, is the other professional sport that's not trying to create that bubble. Uh, there's going to be some challenges for the NFL. They've done a lot of good things and put a lot of good things in place. Um, some guys aren't going to be comfortable with that, and they're going to opt out. There, there's, going to be, there's going to be challenges. There's going to be uh, situations during the course of the season that nobody could have anticipated and right. prepared for. And it's just how do we react at that time? It's great seeing you again. We talked, by the way, we talked lacrosse for 10 minutes before we went on the air today. <laughs> We've got, uh, yeah. well, it's great seeing you, Moose. Uh, always appreciate it. Love your work. And a couple times a year you stop by for us, and I really appreciate you doing it. You're a busy guy. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Always good visiting with you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Okay. Download the all-new Fox Sports app now.